Hey everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarian. I'm joined by the comic book reader himself, Rich Stambolian. I read a lot of comic books. You do, you love comics. I'm also the man of all ages, Rich Stambolian. You are very bright. Oh, thank you. I try. You're, you're, you're broadcasting from the future. I read a well, lot of I'm books. Still, <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still in the current day. You're still in the past. Yeah. <laughs> What's going on, man? Uh, not much, dude. How you doing? Good. Busy week. Yeah, yeah. Crazy week. I've had a very hectic week. Uh, very interesting conversation I had yesterday, uh, which uh, I'll go a little bit into it today. Uh, yeah, let's see. My grandmother right. died. Sorry to hear that. That was Make a big travesty to start the week. Uh, I've, I'm also, I got like 10,000 projects going on this mm -hmm. week. So it's been, it's been fascinating. You had, com you, you were at a uh, comic con last week. I was at comic con. It was pretty freaking fantastic. Uh, a lot of wrestling stuff at comic con. A lot of the most, all the major publishers not there. No Marvel, no DC, no image. They weren't. Why? No boom. You know, like you know, you know what happened in the last couple of years. Oh, because of that, they yeah, weren't. Yeah, they okay. they're gonna travel. Uh, but there was a lot of wrestling fans. There was a big AEW booth. Uh, our buddy Rob Van Dam was there. Jr. was there. Um, King. They were hawking autographs. Jake was there. Uh, you got meet and greets with Ruby Soho, uh, the Lucha Brothers, Adam Cole, and a cool panel. Full of like, I want to say like a thousand people. Wow, really? In like the hall. Wow, that's great. Maybe five hundred. I don't know. I can't really. I yeah. can't really tell. I brought a backpack full of beers that day oh, for me cool. and my buddies. Nice. <laughs> and they were like, "How'd you get in?" And I was like, "Listen, if you're hanging with me, I'm very good at sneaking alcohol into everywhere." So you just snuck it in Perfect. on the planet. Yeah, beautiful. It's great. Yeah, um, you know, busy week, crazy week, but we're here. We're live, and I have a lot of news to tell you. Uh, also, big show announcement coming up today. Yeah. Big, big show announcement. And I don't think Rich knows part of this. I, I've kayfabed Rich. On oh. This. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I do want to begin. I don't know. Do you see what's behind me here? Yeah. You got to. What is that a pair of boots? It's a pair of boots. Where would you, you get this? those boots? I don't know. But they have this logo on them. Huh. Is that the. Uh, I wish I, I found remember this in front of my house. Just. And no box, just no box, just lit, sitting on on front in, on my on like my stoop. That looks like a tooth, huh? It does look like a tooth, and that's like, isn't that the uh, the it's the, the, the medical symbol? symbol. Yeah. I keep forgetting what it's called. Yeah. And my wife's a doctor. I <laughs> uh, uh, I so the sort of I found sleepies. these. I don't know. I I think they belong to Britt Baker. Britt, come get your boots. Somebody brought them here. Uh, no, Bob, brutal Bob in our chat room. Uh, mm. Bob bit on these at at uh, Arthur Ashe. And he uh, won. And he won. And I had no idea. And he's like, huh, I won. I have no need for these. Here you go. <laughs> uh, no, he bit on it. He thought it would be a great addition for the studio. Good and Bob and uh, he, uh, he bit on these. So fantastic. Uh, thank you to Bob for these awesome boots. Uh, very cool, though, huh? These things are Look how great these things are. Those are very nice looking boots. I thought when when you first showed them to me, I thought those were Dolph Ziggler's because he. Has I would the wear same, these. The same strappies. I would wear this. You th did you try them on? No, I I don't know if I'll fit into these. <laughs> I, I don't think I'll fit into these, but I would love it if they fit. Perfect, like you a just, glove. You just wore them every day to work, every day hanging out at home. Dude, I would wear these. Wore them in the shower. But I I can find them. I found the company sh it's from. So I think I'll order like a pair of ridiculous ones. These Golden. are awesome. Golden wrestling boots. Golden wrestling boots. So uh, thank it. you to Bob for this. Great addition to the uh, studio here. Now I got Britt Baker's boots. I want awesome. to taunt her with them. That's what I'm going to start doing. When it, As soon as you said, I found these on my porch this morning, it reminded me, because you live right off of like a very central yeah. bar avenue. It reminded me of like when we were younger and you would see these girls just take their, get drunk, take their shoes off somewhere, start smoking cigarettes, and then walk home leaving their shoes right outside of wherever they were. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, very cool. I, I want to I wanna put it somewhere. We're redoing the studio in January. Uh, mm -hmm. As you can see, we're, we've done some changes already. A little minor uh, Band-Aids. Rich has a different shot. My color, you know, the color is a little... We've NXC 2.0'd the studio. Yeah, we're, we're going to do it even more. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're redoing the whole thing. We're just going to be glowing. We're going to be blue. We're going to be colored. You're going to be purple. Sure. I'll be blue. And then we'll, we'll just... Put bright yellow lights on us and pink lights. I'll be the. You can call me the uh, big. What was it? The big purple people eater. <laughs> the <bi> Barney. <laughs> no. <laughs> so let's uh, do it. Yeah, very cool. Uh, very cool stuff. So I, I don't know where. Let me go into the notes because we have so much to talk about, Rich. Where, where do you want us begin? Because there's a lot of moving parts this week. A lot of stories. Oh boy, you're right. There's a lot of stuff to talk about, but also it's like still a slow 
wrestling week yeah i mean uh, we were yeah. we were like every week where there was something groundbreaking happening for a while over the summer so yeah so I guess we'll go into the news you know so biggie uh biggie had like an awesome saturday they did uh fox's big noon kickoff at iowa he did the, and, and he and he did the intro for uh Tyson Fury versus uh, Wilder. Did you watch it? Night. I thought it was a fantastic I, fight. It was a good, good heavyweight fight, dude. Um, what did you think? Uh, one of the best, you know, fantastic heavyweight trilogy. Are you of the mindset to let Big E just be Big E? People are still yeah. complaining about this poor dude. Yeah, no. Uh, I, I've seen the criticism. You know, he's too goofy as a WWE champion. Uh, Is it goofy or goofy? Goofy. Goofy. He is a little goofy as WWE champion. No, I, I think he gets criticism. I, I think some of it is understandable because mm. I think we've gotten so conditioned to the world champion being a certain way. Serious. Very serious. Yeah. So, listen, I would love a serious Big E run, but his gimmick's gold. And oh, that's yeah. him. He's a, he's a really nice guy. So, uh, I don't know. I, I, I think, you know, the criticism, I understand it. Uh,. But I, I, you know, you're not going to get a serious Biggie doing these appearances. Mm. It doesn't make sense. No, the reason doesn't. why he's doing it is because he's Biggie. Okay, so th I think the whole Biggie thing I find very fascinating because not to say it's a troll, but you know, he's like a goofy character. He's like a big badass at the same time. But when you think about it, when you look at Hulk Hogan with that belt, oh yeah, ridiculous, yeah, silly. Right, Undertaker with a classic Undertaker with that belt doing like Regis and Kathy Lee. Oh, silly, silly. yeah. Silly. Ultimate Warrior uh, doing it with Regis. All silly, like yeah. all silly. I don't see the difference. I, if people are complaining, like, oh, you need like somebody, blah blah blah. Why? Everybody else is cookie cutter, except for uh, yeah. like when you when you have a serious serious champ. I feel like it gets to the point where it's boring. And I think Brock hit that when he had that belt and didn't show up. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Roman, Roman is serious, but it works. It you know? definitely works. I think everybody, you know, it's difficult to draw a comparison like that. You mm -hmm. really, you really can't. Uh, I'm curious what they do with his push. Yeah. Uh, you know, right now his feud is going to be with Drew at, uh, in Saudi Arabia. So mm -hmm. that's going to be a big part of it. So uh, very interesting to see that. So he did the intro. Would you, would you like the Fury fight? Yeah, it was, fun. Yeah. it was, it was it, like, I, I'm a big fan of heavyweight boxing and that felt like a very, very two giant dudes walloping on and, each other. And, and by the way, it, it wasn't like a boring. First of all, it went. It was a twelve round fight, mm -hmm. right? It's rare we see those nowadays, like a twelve yeah. round heavyweight slugfest. Mm -hmm. And these guys knocked each other out. Oh yeah, multiple times. Fury fell twice. Uh, Wilder fell three times. Yeah. So it, it just shows Fury was the better man. But I, I think they both did fantastic. It was a really. Uh, I, I love heavyweight boxing. I love that old school, late 80s, early 90s, heavyweight boxing field. Just gigantic dudes yeah. throwing haymakers. Tyson, Holyfield, Lennox, Lennox Lewis, Lewis. <laughs> Buster Douglas. Oh, yeah. So uh, good. So interesting stuff. A uh, little update on The Rock. Uh, he is apparently in Australia yeah. uh, for, during Survivor Series. Now, does that mean that he won't be doing something at Survivor Series? Mm -hmm. I don't. I, I, they're definitely going to mention it. They're definitely going to talk about it. Something there will be maybe a video appearance or something is planned, mm -hmm. but uh, he's not going to be there. And it really looks like the focus has shifted to moving that Roman let uh, Roman and uh, Rock match to L.A. Um, okay, there. I'll say it this way: there are people that are adamant that it needs to take place in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. They are adamant. People. In the know, no. In the know. That, like, people, there are certain people that say, no, this match should not happen at Dallas. Yeah. It should happen in L.A. I'd be cool with that. And plus, like, that's probably easier for The Rock, you know? I mean, I don't know how much easier it is, but, you if know. If he's living in L.A. You're also playing a game against time. His time. Well, like you know. Age. Age. Okay. <laughs> you know, like father you, time. Like, this match has been three years in the making. Obviously, the pandemic delayed it. Yeah. Uh, now, we're, they're doing Dallas. They're going to do two nights in Dallas, right? Do you want to, you know, do you want to use him for that show? And and does he want to do it? I don't know. There's a lot of back and forth happening right now with this. But hmm. originally, this was happening. Uh, yeah. Multiple, I mean, I'm, I'm saying multiple sources from in the company, out of the company, told me that the plan was this. Now, yeah. where it goes from here, we'll find out. I find that very interesting. Yeah. Okay. So now, from your perspective... Right. 
if you and and this is just like i know you love the corporate stuff from your perspective if you're running the company mm -hmm. or if you're doing the numbers yeah wouldn't you want a best of three series to get three matches out of these guys yeah but, but you can't right so that's the thing so do you think rock would take it upon himself to show up for one match lose to roman and be out because you want, like, that three... The rubber, yeah, they're going to have to do... Yeah, you're right. I, yeah. I, I agree with you. I think, you know, if, if I was booking it, I would want a best of three that right. I would spread out a long time. I wouldn't do, like, you know, big big show, big show, big show. Mm -hmm. I would do... You have the WrestleMania match, you know, and then you go... You do another one maybe six months later. Yeah. And then you wait on that third until, you know, that this is maybe a rock retirement match or something like that. Exactly. And you know what I would love if that ever happened? This is like my fantasy, my quick fantasy booking. Uh, rock beats Roman in that first match and takes the belt, right? And then you see Rock in the media. With the belt. Still as WWE champion. WWE champion. And Roman calls him out for an entire year. I love that. No, but I mean, yeah. then, then who, how the hell is, who is he defending the title to? He just, he just walks around with the title. There's no world title. Uh, another match with Brock. And drops then, it to Brock, maybe. No, another match with Brock beats Brock, drops it to Roman the following year, or six months later, and then that's Rock's retirement. You know, I they're gonna do something, uh, obviously, and they have something in the works. Uh, it's just a matter of getting it when when you know things are hot. Roman is the hottest that he's ever been. Will he be this hot a year from now, a year and a half from now? You know, if they play their cards right, uh, they yeah. can. But yeah. remember, the pandemic delayed a lot of this. Yes. So we're still not in normalcy mm -hmm. with reactions. and so That's why he said, listen, Roman Reigns is, I said this last week and I got so much crap for it. Roman Reigns is the wrestler of the year. He, he's uh -huh. like, that's, that guy is on a show that a lot, he's on SmackDown and he's mm -hmm. really the guy. Like I tuned yeah. into SmackDown to see his opening, to see his, Roman, yeah. to see Roman, and, and I I wasn't a guy that did that before, right, right. So what does that say? It's it's very interesting though, because you have. I don't want to jump into like a twenty minute Kenny versus Roman comparison, you know, especially yeah. if like top two, but Roman's a guy since for almost ten years has had the company behind him every single step of the way, right? Has there ever been a moment where they let this guy stop shining when he got suspended? That's it. Yeah. That's it. But yeah. he came back. The and they, they tried to make an example. The suffering suck attached nonsense, fine. Okay. Right? He played ball. But apart from that, dude's been on a constant high, and he has the whole machine behind him, which is great. You know, the dude's a, a fantastic talent, and you can only do that with certain people. Yeah. So they can keep him hot for what? Like another one, two years as this Roman? It, 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 I, like to this level of hot? Right. I, think, I, I don't think he's peaked yet. In my honest, I, okay. I think there's still room for more for Roman um, mm. in this incarnation. I, I'm not saying like new programmer and just like what the, the act that they're doing now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I can't see that act continuing for almost a year and a half more a, 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 until people get bored, you know, because that this is the match that people want. They mm. know that this is the final boss for Roman, the whole head of the table. That whole thing yeah. is to is for the Rock to show up and say, "Whose table are you sitting at?" I like this that. isn't my table, right? You know, this isn't the the family's table, right? Like, what a great moment that'll be! It's so built in. It's so built in. So I, I think I think it's all fun stuff. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Would you? Here, here's a quick Roman. Another quick Roman question. Would you rather see him comedy first or babyface first after this? Oh, I don't want to see any comedy. Because comedy's going to happen. I hate comedy and wrestling. Mm -hmm. I, like, it's, really? it's not, when it's done right, it's mm -hmm. freaking brilliant. When, but most of the time, it's not done right because you have comedy writers that have mm -hmm. never r written for wrestling. Austin, Austin playing guitar. With Fantastic. That, that, you just saw what I saw in my head. Okay. That was, but that was an accident. Mm -hmm. That was an accident, yeah. <laughs> it wasn't like a writer sat there and was like, okay, now you're going to sing it this way. And then Vince is going to start laughing. Right, right. And you're going to break the fourth wall. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, Roman Reigns announced for the Long Island show at UBS Arena coming up. WWE ticket sales have been very poor for yeah, the show. Surprising. Um, listen, it could be that they came back to the market too many times. Yeah, I think you so. Know, I think you're did, right. It, it's possible they've run this market into the freaking ground. Uh, and also, here's the other thing, right? You have a pay-per-view coming up in a month. Mm -hmm. Um. Are you going to... You have Survivor Series in the end of November. 
how many times are we going to go to a show in New York? Like, like seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, great example. I'm not going to the AEW show in uh, in uh, UBS. I don't think I am. Right, right, right. I just, I, I can't, my, my schedule is way too tight right now. And I'm probably not going to go to the UBS show for Raw because we're going to SmackDown. Uh, I'm sorry, we're going, we're going to Survivor Series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I need to balance out my schedule. I would love to go. I just can't. And I think that might be happening to a lot of people here with this show. There's, I mean, like, it's also a time, it's a time and money thing for sure, because this has been like, this is for us, it's been like a summer of wrestling, you know, even though summer's over right now, but we've been to a, a ton of shows. We've done a ton of events. Uh, that AEW panel on, uh, at Comic-Con was awesome. And, you know, like, I, I think you're right. They dipped into the well too many times, right? And what's the bit of news that's right after this? GCW announces <laughs> Hammerstein Ballroom January 23rd. Yeah. I think we're going to that, right? We, we have to. We have to go. Uh, Mox versus Gage. Um, Maybe Joel Pearl could get us the tickets. Yeah. Like, I don't want to deal. I'll give him the money. Or if he could figure out a ticket. Mm -hmm. Joel, Joel's resourceful. I don't want to see Joel ever again, but <laughs> get his tickets. I don't want to see you face to face Just ever FaceTime. again. Just FaceTime. <laughs> Just FaceTime. FaceTime me. So, uh, yeah, that GCW show. I mean, GCW has become the number four or five promotion right now. <laughs> you know, American promotion. Yeah. Uh, they're running some big things. Mick Foley was there. John Moxley retained the title. Uh, so, interesting. And they announced the Hammerstein Ballroom. Listen, that's a tremendous venue. It's a great venue. It's my favorite venue. Um, I love Hammerstein. Is it your favorite venue for wrestling? Hmm? Is it your favorite venue for wrestling? What is? Hammerstein. Hammerstein is one of my uh, favorite venue for anything. Okay. Yeah. Hammerstein's great. I, mean, I haven't been there in years, man. I yeah. miss it. Uh, it's, it's all cool stuff. So, uh, I don't, I, listen, I'm definitely going to try to go to that show. Mm-hmm. January 23rd at the Hammerstein Ballroom. There's yeah. going to be vomit everywhere and blood and the glass. We're going to have to go. Listen, we, we used to... I, I think people were shocked. We posted mm. that video of our martial arts school. Oh, my God, guys. Uh, I got to... Uh, we'll talk about that in a little bit. All legit. Yeah. Uh, Women of Wrestling reboot for the 18th mm. time. What do you think? Listen, if the, I'm going to reserve my judgment. If they can do it, more power to them. I would love it. I think it's, I think it's really cool that AJ is an executive producer. You yeah. know, that's a great move because it's like uh, fans were like AJ to a uh, AJ Lee to AEW, AJ Lee to AEW. I'm sure she might make an appearance on TV to promote this. Maybe. Yeah. Right. Again, another forbidden door situation. But I think that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, AJ Lee, executive producer. It's a Viacom property. It's going to be on a Viacom channel. Uh, I don't know what channel it would be on. Um, mm. The Tessa Blanchard stuff. So Tessa is the face of this. And yeah. she's getting a lot of heat. There's not a good online press happening here. Yeah. Um, what do you think of that? You know, um, I don't, I honestly really don't have an opinion on it. Um, it's like one of those whatever things, man. Like they signed her. I'm sure there was something to do with it. People wanted her to go to WWE. People wanted to go to AEW. People also were like, hey, I don't want to see her anywhere because of X, Y, and Z. You know? I think you know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know the situation. Like right. it, it's based on, you know. I've heard the stories. I think all of us have heard the stories. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's wrestling. Uh, it's you wrestling. know, yeah. it, it, it's you're going to deal with a lot of people that may not be your type. Mm -hmm. uh, she allegedly said some really bad things, right? Uh, which I don't want to go into. And she made a statement saying that she never said it. Mm -hmm. So then it becomes a he said he said she said thing. And we're where we are. So if you don't like her, don't like her. I definitely I think have no opinion. I don't know her. I don't I don't know much about her. So I, I can't even give you my opinion. I also think this is probably the best move for her. I think so. Between you can get lost in the shuffle in AEW, you can get lost in the shuffle in WWE, but if you're the face of this You're also rehabbing. I think this is a rehab for her image right, more than right. anything else. You know, you're gonna have Viacom as as the property, you're gonna have the show, and I'm sure everybody's gonna talk about how great she was on set <laughs> and how helpful right. and how amazing, and then she's gonna rehab her image. You'll get you'll get like the 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 press packet smoothing everything over if there's yeah. something to smooth over or whatever. Yeah. But I think that's a good for her a good move for her probably to keep her face out there as the top face of a company. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, AEW World Title Eliminator Tournament coming back soon. Uh, let's see. So Tony Khan did a lot of press this week. Mm. 
And uh, he did, a, I think, he did a great podcast, great interview with our buddy, Ravi. From oh, Portugal. yeah, yeah. Uh, he did a tremendous, tremendous job with that interview. And we got a lot of input from here. Uh, one of the things people really focused in on was that he said that Raw sucked. He wasn't a fan of Raw this week. And <laughs> a lot of people picked that up and they ran with it. And, yeah. uh, you know, we'll talk about this war, the Friday night war. We'll, we'll go right into it. But mm. did you hear the interview? He did with Robbie. Uh, I heard the highlights of it. Yeah, I mean, he did say that the main event of Full Gear is Kenny Omega and Hangman Page. Great. <laughs> uh, I mean, and nobody nobody said a word about that. Yeah, great. Yeah. Great. So he also he also by mistake was walking around uh, during the football game uh, with the with like his AEW work, and you can see the whole lineup for that pay per view <laughs> on the paper. So <laughs> if you want to go check it out, check it out. That's funny. The uh, I <laughs> Tony Khan's getting wild, bro. Yeah, guys getting nuts. Guys getting nuts on the air. I love it. I love it. I like to see. You know, like people complain about this poor guy, like how he shouldn't be on TV. I want at least five minutes of Tony Khan every week. It's amazing, right? Because he's a billionaire. Yeah, he seems like a a really sweet guy too. Seems like a sweet guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't know why he gets so much crap. (laughs) I really don't know. Uh, Tony Khan confirmed Hangman Page and Kenny Omega. Obviously, here we also on that card. Here's the. Do you guys want the the leaked card? Uh huh. Do we want this? All right, we'll do it. If you don't want it, then you could skip ahead and mute us for the next, like, minute. Uh, Inner Circle versus American Top Team. Great. MJF versus Darby Allen. CM Punk versus Wardlow. Great. Okay. Thunder Rosa, Jade Cargill, Christian Cage, Adam Cole, Young Bucks, Jurassic Express, Kenny Omega versus Hangman Page, John Moxley versus Brian Danielson. Yeah. You know what? Pretty cool match. Great. That's, uh, that's non-Dean Ambrose. Non Dean Ambrose, John Moxley versus non Brian uh, Daniel Bryan, Brian Danielson. <laughs> so we're gonna, these guys are going to go totally off the freaking wall like lunatics. I think it's going to be nuts, man. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be it's going to be fun. I think like all the cards coming up, like even like, we'll get to it, but like you know, like that rampage, man. Whew. Yeah, we have a Can't lot wait. of super chats coming in, guys. Uh, submit your super chats. We're going to answer them at the end of the show because I'm trying to get through this mm-hmm. really fast. Uh, I don't know how much time we're going to have for the questions, but if you super chat, we'll make sure we get to your question. This last one was a statement. Joel Wood, 499. Yeah. 499. Raw did suck this week. However, I think he should be more worried about the seven weeks in a row of declining rampage yeah. viewership. So let, let's let's huh. talk about this. Interesting. Uh, Tony, Tony also stated that he has not spoken to Bray Wyatt. Mm-hmm. By the way, I have some more information about his release. Okay. Right? You want to go into that? Uh, yeah. I okay. want to be careful with this. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I'm not going to... I'm not even going to allude where it came from. Who mm-hmm. told me this? Uh, I would say that this is probably one of the most legitimate people I've spoken to that would be able to address this. Okay, cool. This isn't a uh, a friend of a friend told me, and I'm, I even have to second source and triple source or any of that. Okay, this is firsthand information. This is, this is as close as you could possibly get. Okay, and it's not Bray, and it's not. I'm not gonna. I'm not. It's nobody that you would ever imagine. Okay. Um, Bray was being difficult, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm filling, I'm not, I'm going to fill in a lot. I'm not even going to quote mm-hmm. here. Okay. Cause Got I have the quote. I don't want to quote it. Got it. Um, he was, he was a little difficult. He had some performance issues mm-hmm. in the ring and he had a, he had some weight issues and I, you know, that I'm not saying that that's a reason. Okay. I'm not going to say that's a reason, but you can kind of piece things together as to, you know, the things when you evaluate a talent and you're like, okay, we need this and we need that. And this is the plan moving forward. You need someone. Uh, my neural link is in, by the way, the neural link has been put in. Uh, sometimes the decision is easier to make if you make it more difficult for them to make that decision. Mm-hmm. So I don't, there's so many different variables. There is no one reason, by the way, yeah, let me yeah. just put it out there. Yeah. Financial. Yes. There was a financial issue. There were plenty of other other scenarios here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't think he was happy. Sure. Um, and I, I would tell you that it these 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 decisions are not cut and dry. Right. It's not like that whole thing. Like, oh, it was a money thing, and that's it. Like, obviously, they're going to say that. That'll be the public answer because most likely it did play a part of money. Because you know what, mm-hmm. you could only like some guys so much when you're losing money. I'm not saying that they were losing money, but I'm just putting it out there like that. Right. You know, so uh, there were there were numerous reasons, not one. Well, you know, like all this stuff that's coming out recently, I do personally feel like WWE has some kind of like corporate three strikes rule. Money, if you don't play ball, yeah. 
right? Let's say money, attitude, and marketability. But isn't that isn't that everybody? Like that's my rule, right? With with my staff, mm-hmm. how much money am I paying you? How much ROI am I getting back? Because I'm big on ROI, like, right? Right. I, right. I put personal responsibility of ROI onto everybody that works for me. Yeah. I don't care. I don't care what you do. What's your ROI? I'm paying you fifty grand. Are you making me fifty thousand in return? Not what's your reggae? What's your reggae? Right. That's next. That's my second <laughs> question. So what's I, your reggae on impact? That's ROI. Oh, well, that is <laughs> ROI. Uh, yeah, it's you know it's investment ROI mm-hmm. and attitude, right? Yeah, and, and listen. If if the ROI, the, first of all, if ROI goes, then you mm. better be loved. Right. Okay. You Love better be loved. Way. And if and if you're not loved and you're costing them money and now things are getting a little difficult, you're not maybe you're not into it as much. Is Sean Michaels the best example of like this weird nonsense? Sean Sean is fascinating mm. because my God, nobody would have tolerated Vince, nobody else Vince would have tolerated like that. But he loved Sean. He loved him. Yeah. He loved him. Yeah. Listen, I, you sometimes you connect with people. You know, I have more yeah. tolerance. Like, even with work, like, a couple of people that work for me, mm. they suck. <laughs> but, but I really generally like them. They're yeah, great yeah, yeah. people. Like, and I have, and, and I personally will say, like, well, I'll put a little bit more effort in getting them to do what they need to do yeah, because yeah, yeah. I really like this person. Mm. Um, so I, I, think it's, I think it's very interesting, the Bray stuff. Uh, Tony's saying he has not spoken to Bray. Uh, we don't know. Listen, him going to AEW would be fantastic. I personally, I would like to see it. But if he goes to Impact, which Dave reported and some other people reported that that may be where he's headed, mm. uh, I don't know if anybody's going to care. And that's sad. Yeah. Because Impact's doing decent stuff. Like, J- Josh Alexander is having the run of his life right now. Yeah, He's dude. fantastic. And people aren't talking about it. Yeah, it's... it's you Listen, know, including us. Yeah, I know. It was a shame. He's, he's, he's a friend of the show. Um, I think he's a big enough name that wherever he goes a certain amount of clout will come with him you know let's say this guy shows up in mlw or impact or even AEW. tony khan could be kayfabe in us you know or even a return back to wwe you know I, I, by the way we read that we read that sheet of yeah. the matches uh i wouldn't be surprised if he's working us right you know what i mean like yeah. oh yeah it's wrestling uh i also tend not to <laughs> Not to believe a lot of the wrestlers exactly. that tell me stuff. <laughs> Never forget. I think that's the big rule. Never forget it's wrestling. I was it's told pro wrestling. Yeah, I, I was told don't get mad. So when Jinder was winning the title, yeah, I was told that he was going to win the title. Okay, and I literally said to the guy, "I'm like, you're just a dopey wrestler lying to me," and mm-hmm. I hung up the phone. Oh yeah, yeah, a friend of mine. It's a friend. Click. Yeah, it's a friend. So like, and then he's like, he's like, who's the idiot now? Mm-hmm. I'm like, me, obviously. <laughs> you could have had that scoop, bro. Could have had that scoop. That scoop of scoops. Uh, you let's know, see. can we get you instead of like you know how Triple H had the King of King shirt? Yeah. Can scoop we scoops. get you the same font and format? The scoop of scoops. I feel like the second I make that shirt and it starts selling, <laughs> I'm never going to be told another thing ever again. Oh, it's so good. I love your shirt, by the way. Thank you. Fantastic shirt. I appreciate it. Did you just buy it at Comic Con? I got it at Comic Con. I was like, get a little color into my life. Nice. I don't I wear. Yeah. I wear black t shirts twenty four seven. I sleep in a coffin too. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Where else are we here? Uh, Tony Khan is working on a deal mm-hmm. with Time Warner to stream the AEW library, mm-hmm. which, uh, this was, this was always part of the plan. I think the pandemic kind of delayed it, but they also yeah. needed some archives. You know, you can't, you needed at least 24 months of content mm-hmm. to put up on there. Um, I believe they had said that they were going to have their Saturday shows, like their house shows on there. Hell yeah. That's part of the programming. So they'll have everything on their pay-per-views and then, uh, whatever they do with their house shows. I think one a one stop shop for all the AEW stuff would be fantastic. Like Dark yeah. Elevation, Dark, like, you know. Some I don't watch it as much because mm. I gotta like go to YouTube and Dang I gotta like remember <laughs> and I gotta watch. Like I, I need to watch it on a TV. Modern I can't day watch pain. Yeah, yeah, modern day pain. Uh, if they threw it on HBO Max, that would be the best. What? Why? Why wouldn't it be on HBO Max? Yes. Why? Uh, no, I'm asking. Like, is there a reason why they wouldn't put it on there? I not that I could think of, man. That that thing is awesome. It's fantastic. It I really love, is. I. I feel like I watch more HBO Max than I do Netflix. Yeah, but all I, me too, but all I watch is Sex and the City reruns. And Sopranos. And Sopranos, yeah. yeah. Just Sex and the City. And Deadwood. Oh, Deadwood's the best. Yeah. Do you ever, are you a big Sex and the City guy? Loved it. It's fascinating. Fantastic. My buddy Bobby loves Sex and the City too. I'm the Miranda of the group. Are you the Miranda? No, I do I do that all the time. Every time I see like, an, like a group mm-hmm. of... Uh, Basic bees? Yeah. <laughs> and I, I look at my wife 
And like everybody's like, che- they're all cheering mm-hmm. and having. I, I look at I look at Jess and I go, "Well, I'm the Miranda of the group, <laughs> and she's Charlotte." <laughs> I don't even know their names. Yeah, Miranda, Charlotte, uh-huh. uh, um, Carrie, uh, Miranda, Charlotte, Carrie, and uh, who, what's the uh, the Night Stalker? What's the what, the Night Stalker? <laughs> the last one's called the Night Stalker. Yeah. Right? <laughs> well, Samantha, 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 she's the uh, she's the one that's a little loose with the men. Samantha the Night Stalker. <laughs> Samantha the Night Stalker. Uh, you know what? Can you imagine if they, you know, they're bringing it back, Sex and the City, and Samantha's not in it. She uh-huh. chose not to be in it. What if, what if the whole story is that there's, there's these crimes being committed? Okay. And she's, Ooh, that'd be amazing. Th- she's murdering all these men. I'd like that. I'd yeah. like that very much. I'd like to see that. Uh, Hot Hit says HBO Max doesn't have sports related stuff, is the only reason why they might not do it, but they do have sports documentaries and real sports. With Brian yeah. Gumble, yeah, it's very so, interesting. It's interesting. Uh, let's see, where else are we? We're right there, baby. We're right where we need to be. Uh, apparently, this is this is a bit of news that I love. Mm-hmm. The Miz on Dancing with the Stars came out as the genie. I mean, from he Aladdin, was, he was unrecognizable. Yeah, <laughs> that, that guy. That guy's dedicated. That is freaky. How how like natural he looks. Ah, uh, dude, I think he needs to be the genie on Raw. Just saw. Him. And turned around to me and gave me the best Arrested Development line. She goes, oh, he just blew himself. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah, so they, we have that. And then TLC, by the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, there is no plans for WWE to host December pay-per-view. Oh, interesting. Uh, but the new WWE Day 1 event will be scheduled for January 1st mm-hmm. in Atlanta. Would take would affect serve as the designated December paper. So TLC's gone. You know what? Mm. I hate that pay per view. It's such a nothing show in yeah, December. Dude. They just do it to do it. Uh, I don't think it's necessary considering they're going mm. to Saudi Arabia now, like next week, yeah. and then they're doing oh, yeah. they're doing another pay per view in like three weeks after that. So you're out of town next week. I am in Edison, New Jersey next week. Can you tell people? I, I don't. Why? I, I will. I will show it. You're gonna be. You're gonna be away. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna so be at an event. I in might. Jersey. I might live tweet. Um, the Saudi thing. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. Okay. If, if I'm... Uh, no promises. If I feel like it. No promises. Yeah. You want to go into uh, SmackDown notes? Let's do it. All right. So, uh, Roman made Paul Heyman threaten Brock Lesnar. I like, I like how Heyman is the squirmy, like, part of this love triangle that's happening. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm into it. It's fine. Uh, you know, Brock Lesnar's involved mm. with Roman. Uh, I think that's going to be... I'm fine with it. Uh, you're also, the Saudi card looks good. It does. You're getting Seth and, and Edge in a Hell in a Cell, which are like I'm, that kind of piqued my interest a little bit. That seems yeah. interesting. But are they going to do the big red cell, or are they going to do like uh, like another color? What the big red cell? I don't like the big red cell. That's I hate the big red cell. Yeah, I hate the big. I'm not a fan. It looks like licorice. It looks oh, like you could take you know a bite there. Forgot? You know what I forgot to go into? Yeah, go ahead. The Friday Night War. Oh yeah. Let's talk, you want to go into that instead of uh, and skip, skip SmackDown? Uh, feel free. Okay. So let's see. Rampage is on 10 o'clock, 10 to mm-hmm. 11. SmackDown is on FS1 this week mm. for MLB reasons. Yes. SmackDown is adding a, 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 a half hour extra mm-hmm. to the end of the show to impede on their numbers, right? On the Rampage number. Because they've been on a seven week decline, six week decline with the numbers. Um, I would tell you, you know, the fives are very low for that show. I think a healthy number is 650 to 750. Okay. Uh, for a Friday night at ten o'clock, I think a six to be sitting at six fifty to seven fifty mm-hmm. is is the number. Okay, like for me, realistically, because it's a Friday night at ten mm-hmm. o'clock. Who the hell's home? Mm-hmm. You know, and if you are home, is are you watching wrestling at ten o'clock at night? So these are all questions. I think that time slot is terrible. That is true. Yeah, it's a terrible time slot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I don't think it's a good time slot, but they you know adding a big match every couple of weeks they could have a big bump for sure in, in these numbers. So we'll see what happens you know with the show because putting it on at seven o'clock is a little too early. You think so? It's four o'clock on the West Coast. True. Okay. Okay. You know, so we'll see. Sm- Tony Khan announced that they're doing a buy-in right before Rampage at nine o'clock. It's awesome. Right. And that buy-in is going to feature two matches. And I want to get your opinion on this. Shoot. We're going to see... Uh, who's um, Bobby Fish facing? L- Lee Moriarty. Okay. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm excited for that very match. Cool. Yeah, yeah, very yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. 
But the main one is Minoru Suzuki Dude. and Brian Danielson for the first time since 2004. I know. Okay? You're giving this away on YouTube to disrupt mm -hmm. SmackDown. Yes. Why wouldn't you put this on TV? Listen, man. I get it. Listen, I get, I get that they're trying to do something different here. Yeah, yeah. I would not have done that. I'm also not Tony Khan. Mm. I'm also not a billionaire. And he's probably yeah. way smarter than I am. But yeah. the way that I see this, like, okay, you're, you're, you're chopping off your arm to save your pinky. Mm -hmm. That's a fantastic TV match. And you got a show on Saturday. Now, do you think um, Brian Danielson and Suzuki were approached with where that match is going to be? I don't know. I, 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 I haven't really, I've been, I've been so busy this week. I haven't dug deep into this, but mm -hmm. listen, I think, I think the fact that those two are facing each other, they're happy about it. And they're, and you know, they're being utilized as a disruptor. And I'm kind of, I like, I would be cool with that if that was me yeah. to be, to disrupt something like that. Like, Dude. I'm like, okay, you know what? That's a cool, I get the idea. I get the concept. I get all of it. Right. This, but it's, you're not, it's not going to, it's not going to impact uh, I, I I don't see it messing up the, the the SmackDown numbers whatsoever. I you know I don't think uh, me personally. This is my perspective. I feel like this was done not to disrupt not to disrupt numbers, but it's a it's a two edged sword. On one edge, it's I'm giving you the wrestling fan yeah. the true alternative to what you're watching. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Here yeah. is Brian Danielson. Former Daniel Bryan Facing versus Minoru Suzuki. friggin' Minoru Suzuki. It's a wrestling. It's, 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 it's very wrestling. And then after he made the announcement, the second part of that edge is Tony Khan folding his arms and going, guess what? Yeah. I just made the internet jazz their pants. Yeah. That's it. You know? So uh, Joel Pearl in the chat room. Uh, they're airing Captain Marvel on TNT on Friday before Rampage. The lead-in wouldn't allow for an earlier slot. I get that. Interesting. Okay. Th th that's fine. Uh, not a bad movie. <laughs> not, no, not a bad movie at all. But you know what? Uh -huh. We'll see how successful this is. I'm going to tell you something. I find this stuff to be so trivial and so boring. The mm -hmm. whole war against each other stuff. Like, I, I think competition is super healthy. Absolutely. You need Absolutely. it. And I think it's healthy for both brands. You could see that AEW, uh, WWE has responded, right? A yeah. and, and people were like, well, are they going to respond? I think they have responded because they're putting on some pretty decent matches raw yeah raw mm -hmm. was not a great show this week right. uh and, and it's and it's been difficult but the last i want to say six weeks wwe has been pretty good you know with, with every there's something happening constantly and and yeah. as a fan i could appreciate that you can see the writing on the wall a little bit with wwe now where it seems like it's a not a rebranding but a internal restructuring and this week's nxt was a great example of that yeah, so their numbers are leveled off at like what six thirty three for uh for NXT, right? Mm -hmm. Six twenty three, six thirty three, whatever it was. I gotta tell you though, that's not a bad number for a show that nobody knows anybody right. on the show. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna be so honest with you. Go for it. I have in, in talking to people constantly, right, online, in person about wrestling. Nobody knows anybody on that freaking card anymore. I yeah. mean, obviously you have the like, standards, right, that people do know the Garganos, the Champas, whatever. Kyle O'Reilly. Kyle O'Reilly. I don't even think people know Kyle O'Reilly. I'm going to be honest with you. Okay. All right. Fair enough. It, it, they, they have a show with up and coming developmental talent mm -hmm. that they're drawing 633,000 viewers for. Okay. It's not that bad. No, it's not. Uh, Nikolai Kreese, $5. Uh, not a question, a statement, possibly unpopular opinion, but I like Danielson versus Suzuki on YouTube for one simple reason. Yeah. Smart answer. No commercial breaks. No commercial breaks. Yeah, that's actually a great. I didn't even think of that. Think so of you that. can hear the chops and see the and be the chops and be the chops. Hear the chops, see the chops, be the chops. Yeah, that's my advice for you guys. Uh, you know what's funny? Um, we talk about booking and we talk about all this stuff a lot on the show. Uh, when I was at that AEW panel, uh, Tony Schiavone hosted it. Right? People were shouting out dream matches and shouting out who should win certain things. Yeah. At two points during the panel, Tony Schiavone goes, "By the way, guys, booking one hundred and one is next door." Because if any of you guys, I, I'm not, this is not verbatim. Yeah. It's like, if any of you guys were sitting in that hot seat at 7.50 before an 8 o'clock live show, you'd shit your pants. I don't think people realize how difficult it is to write a show 
like that. And time a show. And time a I show. I think the writing is the easy part, easier part than to time the timing it. it. You yeah. Know? Yeah, it's 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 all interesting. Uh, let's see. SmackDown did 2.1 million. FS1 this week. Super size show. Mm-hmm. Two and a half hours. Brock Le- By the way, they have stacked the show. Okay, let's talk about that. Oh my god. Yeah. They really, you know, they're doing 2 million. The last time they were on FS1, I believe mm-hmm. it was December. They did a December show that did 800 and something thousand and they had run an October show yeah. uh, last year that did well as well. So, I don't see this whole, you know, I don't see SmackDown losing to AEW. Right, right, right. I, I think this this war is is. I think it's a really nice marketing tool that both brands are using to create buzz this week on TV. That have used this strategy forever, forever. Yeah, it's a strategy. I don't think anybody's taking anything personal here. It is. It's competitiveness. I think it's mm-hmm. fun. However, they do have Brock Lesnar appearing. They do have Sasha Banks and Becky versus Becky Lynch. Mm-hmm. They have Zelina Vega versus Carmella in, the, in a semifinal match. They have Finn Balor and Sami Zayn semifinal match. Naomi, Sonya Deville. Sonya's return to the ring. Um, not bad. No, not bad at all. Not bad. And then we'll go into AEW's counter programming, but not, not bad. bad at all. Raw did 1.5 million. Not a good rating. It was up against baseball and football. <laughs> uh, champion uh, Charlotte and Becky versus uh, Bianca and Sasha Banks mm-hmm. went to no contest. Biggie and Drew McIntyre. You saw Drew uh, now Drew challenging for the mm-hmm. title. King of the Ring first round results. Xavier Woods defeated Ricochet in a 10 minute match. Jinder Mahal defeated Kofi Kingston. Mm-hmm. So I would have loved to see Kofi and and. Uh, Xavier go one on one in this. Oh, absolutely! Queen's Crown Tournament on the Raw side. Shayna Baszler defeated Dana mm-hmm. Brooke, and I was going to say Drop Kick Do Drop defeated Natalia in three minutes. Do Drop. So one minute twenty four for Shayna Baszler and Dana Brooke, and three minutes for Do Drop. Fascinating. NXT did six thirty three, identical from last week. Mm-hmm. We mentioned that. Uh, Tommaso Ciampa Chomp- defeated Joe Gr- Gacy, uh, non title match. Uh, Gacy, did you see what Gacy did to Harlan? No, I didn't see it. He so um, Harlan came out and uh, he tried to. He was like choking Gacy basically, and Gacy basically cornered him. Oh yeah, he did cornered on the me. side he of the his face. face. He yeah. was like, yeah. Did he tell him he's Italian American also? And then Harlan ran away. Yeah, toxic addish, uh, addiction. So I think I like the group. It's a weird group. Um, I think they need a gimp on a leash, <laughs> like. <laughs> Just a dude, leather, yeah. leather mask, all leather, yeah. who also like almost like a Festus thing where they're like, if they're get if they have any encounter with like guys they don't like, they send this dude and he'll like, did it's you, a bougie. Did you, see, <laughs> did you see any dudes on leashes at Comic-Con? No. I saw one uh, leaving Penn Station last week, dude on a leash mm-hmm. with like the, the mat, the gimp mask and everything. And wow. this woman walking like a normal, normal outfit. Walking I think them. that's just a normal Manhattan. Experience. I think it's just a normal Manhattan experience. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Uh, Halloween Havoc card. Also, uh, we're doing it again this year. Obviously, mm. uh, Tommaso Ciampa versus Braun Breaker. Does Braun win the title? Yes. Wow. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yes. Yes. He wins the title. Okay. Bro- listen, so the end of. The end of NXT last night saw uh, Swerve Scott defeat Santos Escobar. Tuesday. Tuesday, Tuesday sorry. Yeah. Um, beat Santos Escobar. Great match. A lot of fun. Uh, big fan of Swerve. I hope he does well on SmackDown. Carmelo Hayes cashes in his breakout tournament contract on him. They have a quick two-minute match. Carmelo Hayes is now the North American champion for NXT. Yes. And apparently he's like, he is now the Shawn Michaels protege. I saw that. Yeah, Sean and him had a photo. Very interesting. All right. We'll see what happens. Yeah, and yes, Braun Breaker, again, yeah. beats Tommaso Ciampa and takes that title. So here's the Rampage uh, the rampage stuff for Friday. Yeah. By 9 p.m. on YouTube. Boom. Brian Danielson versus Minoru Suzuki. Hell yeah. Uh, Bobby Fish versus Leah Mor- Moriarty. Moriarty. <laughs> Chef Boyardi. Mor- Mori. Moriarty. Moriarty. I can't say it today. Do you not watch it, Holmes? Uh, I did. Moriarty. 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 Mori. Moriarty. 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 Artie Lang. Uh, and then we got Rampage at ten o'clock. CM Punk versus Matt Seidel. Okay, Great. cool match. I'm into that. Ruby Soho versus the Bunny. Okay. Great. Chris Jericho and TNT Champion Sammy Guevara, along with Jay Jake Hager versus Man of the Men of the Year. 
Ethan Page, Scorpio Sky. Ethan Page, Scorpio Sky, and Junior Dos, Dos Santos with, with Jorge Masvidal <laughs> and Dan Lambert in the corner. Jorge is going to be the biggest star in wrestling. I think so. I think he's, he's, he's definitely, if he hits everybody with that yeah. flying knee, I'll be very excited about that. Scorp, I think, signed a five-year extension on his AEW contract. He did, really? Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, I think, you know, I'm liking this Ethan Page and Scorpio Sky team. Great team. Very good team. Great team. Ethan Page is tremendous. Yes. Like, very good. Very, very, very good. Very, very good. My, you know, like, I, this is, like, the minor is gripe, but I do feel like sometimes you get, like, too much of the same dude on the roster. Like, yeah. I love the men of the year gimmick, but it's also, like, Ricky Starks is doing the same thing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, open shirts. Uh-huh. They're doing the Andrew. They're doing the Andrew. <laughs> Andrew's in a t-shirt today. You're going to rip it open, though. Oh, and there's going to be another shirt underneath. underneath. <laughs> the button down underneath. You see, you, see, this is, you see, this is why we've been friends for so long. Mm -hmm. uh, do you guys want the big news? Hit it. All right. So, I guess we'll do this. Okay. Uh, I quit. This is the final show. You will never see me again. Oh, it no. is all over. No. Uh, so, this is pretty cool. <laughs> you know, as you guys know, I'm a big radio fan, right? I, I, this was my influence in doing this. Wrestling was... Talking wrestling was just a coincidental thing that Rich and I looked at each other and we're like, hey, you want to do a wrestling podcast? At one point in 2011, mm -hmm. late 2011, and this has been an awesome ride, but we always think like, okay, what's next? What are we doing next, right? With mm -hmm. the show, out of the show, what projects am I doing? What projects is Rich doing? And there have been three influences in my career, in okay. my broadcasting career, right? Mm -hmm. It's... Howard Stern, mm -hmm. because he was the king of radio Ooh. in New York, right? Yeah. Hoo, hoo, hey, who? Uh, <laughs> tell him, Rob. Tell him, Fred. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Uh, you know, my wife, Allison. Allison. Oh, that's uh, good. Allison. That's good. Uh, big Howard fan, you know, growing up. I haven't listened in like 10 years, but still, major influence yeah, on, yeah, my, yeah. On, my, on my outlook on broadcasting and media. Uh, Leo Laporte, okay. with the technology stuff, really yeah. got me into tech. Uh -huh. uh, I, I've had a great run with that. I think now that that's phasing out a little bit because other priorities have happened and, and work has gotten crazy. The third influence in, and most likely the reason why we do this has to do with a company called IATA. Mm -hmm. Okay. IATA Radio was, a, was an internet broadcasting network that was, you know, all the major conglomerates were involved. Time Warner was involved. I think Bank of America was involved. Everybody was involved, right? Uh, they were really the first. Chauncey Hayden, by the way, yes. was a morning guy there. Uh, but they had a little radio show in the afternoon that blew away everybody's numbers. And that was called the Wrestling Observer Live. Mm -hmm. Right? We now know the Observer Live is still on the radio. Absolutely. 340 markets. Uh, Brian Alvarez has done a tremendous job hosting it. Obviously, he does Wrestling Observer Radio, but Dave no longer hosts that show. Mm -hmm. um, and now the announcement... There is a, another host to that show on the weekends, Sundays right now, and that is me. I'll be hosting a Wrestling Observer live radio show every Sunday from 6 to 8 p.m. East. And Rich, I would love for you to be my sit-in co-host for the first show. Ooh, I'd like that as well. Uh, excellent. Congratulations. Thank you. So this is going to be fun. Um, does it change this show? Probably not. I think it's just going to bring more, uh, more eyeballs to this. Yes. But I think this is really cool. There's going to, and we're going to do something very different with that show. Uh, obviously, we're going to follow what Brian's been doing for the last 20-something years with that show. Last 15 years of the evolution of that show. We're going to stick. We're going to represent it as true that we can. But I want to do something a little different. That's why we're doing two hours on Sundays. That's why we're going to be taking phone calls. We're going to be doing the text. We're going to be doing it. And then also, we're going to be doing guests. I want to incorporate the entire community in this thing. Uh, this is going to be a, a really fun passion project for me that's awesome uh but you know to be able to say like i'm i'm hosting the observer live show 340 markets on sports byline usa radio network uh also uh, syndicated online obviously we we just we know how well that show does and the impact of that show and to be part of it i'm very uh appreciative that tony and brian uh gave me this opportunity to do this so very very cool it's not starting this sunday uh, the reason for that is that there's some technical stuff that we need to put in. Uh, I need to put in a unit to communicate with the station. So we need to get that in. We need to set it up. And then we need to. I need to do a couple uh, practice shows. Very nice. I'm a little rusty with radio. I haven't, um, I haven't done radio in many, many years. Yeah, this is a visual medium for the most part. Very visual medium. I do medium. think a lot of people still listen to us. But also, congratulations. Thank you. 
There you go, reggae hornet. Yeah, yeah. so very cool. Starting on Sundays. Uh, non-paper. So here's the other thing. Pay-per-view days. Uh, Brian is doing it. Mm. Uh, Brian is going to be doing the pay-per-view days because I know that we do the watch-alongs and I don't right. want to get into that. Maybe we could do some sort of crossover. The other idea was that Brian takes takes over from 6 to 7 and from 7 to 8, we could do a preview show. Cool. So we could go on the air at 7 o'clock. We're working on that. We're going to figure it out, but we are going to do some really cool stuff with this. This is just another step. Uh, there's other news also happening. Uh, there's also some other stuff going on, uh, which we're saving. We're still working. I'm working nice. on other things. Very so nice. there's a lot. There's a lot of moving parts, but this is very cool. I want to go into that before we go into the news. Uh, I'm sorry, the the mailback questions. Mailback questions. Uh, we got another little tidbit before we get yeah. into the questions. Uh, we got to be out of here in about 15 minutes. But uh, our new Patreon tiers are going to go live today. Uh, thank you guys for subscribing. If you haven't checked out our Patreon, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're really ramping it up. Uh, Patreon.com slash Mattman Podcast. Uh, we're doing a new Patreon show coming today to the $5 tier and above. Uh, it's the inaugural Geek and Destroy featuring an in-depth look at the signing of Gable Stevens. He did a good job. Yes. He did a very good job with that. MG Geek, I, I have to tell you, I, I did not, mm-hmm. not that I didn't have expectations, but I didn't know what he was doing. Yeah. And I listened to it and I'm like, you know what? He did a great job at like breaking this down with like no opinion, mm-hmm. like very straightforward. He did a fantastic job with it. He did a great job. He accidentally sent me the wrong file first. So all I heard was, ooh, mow, 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 mow. And I was like, yeah, this goes on for like two hours. How'd you, you do that? No, you know what it is? You know what the wrong file is? It's him just after he's done recording. He never stopped it. And it's just him like breathing heavily and like, I fucked it up. Nobody's going to like this. It yeah. sucks. And he, him just talking himself down. I got to break all the mirrors in the house. <laughs> anyway, MG Geek, uh, one of our producers, did such a great job with this. So his new segment on our Patreon is going to be called Geek and Destroy. He does, uh, like I said, he's going to do an in-depth feature on the signing of Gable Steveson. Uh, I'm going to have a new blog, and I'm going to do repeated blogs for the Patreon. And uh, we're going to take some polls about the new features, too, see what you guys like. What should we move over? Uh, we eliminated a couple of tiers. We're throwing more high-end tiers there, and we're giving you some more stuff for the lower-end tiers. So, uh, guys, join us, patreon.com slash Podcast. Yeah, very cool. It is time for our Q&A segment. You have a question, submit it in the chat room. You want it definitely answered. Hit the Super Chat button. Fund us whatever you want to fund us, and we will make sure that your question goes straight to the top. Yes, sir. All right. So the first uh, is from Joel Wood. Jo- I can't even say the name. Joel Wood, uh, four ninety nine. I love Reigns. He hasn't been pinned since December twenty nineteen. I don't know if they can continue that with him as champion for eighteen more months. Yeah, I don't. I don't necessarily think he should be champion for eighteen more mm-hmm. months. Um, I also don't think he needs the title for, you know, to face the Rock. But, you know, it's another level of excitement to the match, and I don't think you're going to get that in 18 months, but I, 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 I hope I'm wrong. I hope that we do get it in 18 months. Yeah. Who's going to be the I, first? I hope, I hope if, 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 if it is happening in 18 months or whatever, I hope that it's, it, he still is at the level that he's at right now. Uh, guys, in the next couple of minutes, could uh, Jonathan and MG, could you copy and paste a ton of questions onto the spreadsheet, please? Is there none there? There's two. Uh, Bob Rowe, do you yeah. think the UBS location is a problem? Bob Rowe got me these boots. Those boots from Bob Rowe. I think he wanted me to wear these. I think he was hoping that I could fit into these. I think you can squeeze into them. To squeeze into these boots? Yeah. Can I just hit people with it? I think so. Could that be my thing? I just hit people with Bert Baker's boots? Like, I go to the AEW shows or WWE shows, and I just hit people with the with Baker's boots. That's going to be the gimmick. Uh, I think the location is... It's only a problem because they're saturating the market. New York has really gotten saturated, and I think mm-hmm. they're, they're starting to realize they've been coming back to the market too often. I, I mean, that, that, would be, that would be the answer here. Because it's a brand new building. I think a lot of mm-hmm. people want to be in that building. Um, I, I'm... The thing I'm really curious about is the thing I'm really curious about is that how will the building react? Because the Nassau Coliseum is a terrible mm-hmm. building for like fan reactions. It's very quiet. So I would say that um, I would. I don't know what's going on here. Open up Twitter. What is he? What is MG? Because we have the we have the Twitter questions. Oh, because we have the Twitter questions. That's what he calls your butthole. Oh, is that what he calls it? <laughs> yeah, open up Twitter. 
Uh, we got a uh, we got from the Nerd Guru 199. Does Flair get added to the triple threat at Crown Jewel? Charlotte Flair. I want Rick to be added. <laughs> well, uh, John Gorman, another $5. Uh, I, you know what? I don't think she's going to get added. John Gorman, another $5. Luna Vachon's Dark Side of the Ring airs tonight on Vice. What has been your favorite episode of this season's Dark Side of the Ring? You know, I'm a little behind. Okay. Um, I really want to make time to make a meal of the FMW one. I have yet to see that one. Yeah. I haven't seen that one. I feel like that's going to be my favorite one. Okay. What, what's your favorite so far? Uh, what was the first one? They were all pretty, like, they were they've all pretty all gnarly, good. dude. Yeah, they've been good, but, like, uh, they've been gnarly, man. What is it, season three? Yeah, season three. Pillman was last season, right? No, Pillman was this season. P- uh, the Pillman one. Yeah, by far. All right, so, yeah, so they had, let's see. Yeah, Brian Pillman part one, Brian Pillman part two. That was great. Uh, the Nick Gage stuff, eh, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Collision in Korea, I've heard the story. Becoming Warrior, I thought that that show would have had a little bit more umph to it. That, that was season two, though. No, season three. Yeah, you yeah. sure? Yeah. Huh. Uh, Shadow of Grizzly Smith. That was a really good one. Oh, I didn't see that one. In the Shadow of Grizzly Smith, about Grizzly Smith and, and, and Jake Roberts. Mm. The Dynamite Kid one was good. Yes. Uh, the Plane Ride from Hell one. Uh, it got. I don't know mm. what my opinion of that is, like my true opinion, because it got so big. Yes. You know? And the Chris Canyon one, I thought was done well. I have yet to see the Onita one or the uh, the uh, uh, um, Johnny K-9 one. Yeah. Uh, we got, um, but there's two more after the Luna one, you know that, right? Yes. There's Rob Black's XPW, which I'm very curious to watch how uh-huh. they, what they do with this. Uh, Rob Black was a pornographer. Yes. He was a, he, he was a, a hardcore porn producer, I guess. And he created XPW. Uh, they created XPW to, I got a weird text message uh, just now. Spencer, watch out. Oh, nice. He did okay. it without uh, uh, busting the wires. Yeah, sorry. Uh, he did it like to follow ECW, and it became like this. Mm. It, it was successful for the time being. Uh, we what was the la- what's the last la- episode? Is it Terry Funk and uh, McFoley? Am I wrong about that? When? Which one? The last Dark Side. The last one was yeah. uh, Johnny K Nine. No, 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 I'm saying the last one of the season. Oh, steroid trial. Ooh, that's yeah, gonna be good. That's one. gonna be good. And I know Dave, Dave Bixen Span worked on that, and I know he's been very hands on with the steroid trial. Mm-hmm. He had a series uh, on the steroid trial. He, he he covered it on his website, and I, he he did a very detailed mm-hmm. look into it. Uh, Lenier Harley, one dollar message retracted. Thanks anyway. That's okay, cool. thank you. I got nervous. Uh, Joel Wood, another four ninety nine. Have you heard the story from Voices of Wrestling about WWE leaking? The AEW Fast Nationals viewership. Is there any truth to that? Um, I don't know what, what like, leaking how. That's what I want to know. Like, what, what, is, what does that mean from leaking? Like, providing it to media? Okay. Right? Like, yeah. I, I guess... It, I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, you know, with this, but there, there is some truth to it. I don't mm. know if you would say leaking... Right. I don't like I know that people have the fast track and it's not an easy thing to obtain. You got to pay for it. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if WWE's getting the number, you know, now they have, they have access to it and they're just putting it out to media partners, mm-hmm. which a lot of people do. Uh, you know, we've seen them put out press releases. Uh, I don't think it's done in like this whole like I'm going to leak the, the yeah. rampage numbers, <sighs> you know, like I'm going to I'm going to come down on them and, and, and get the bad press. I don't think it's done in that way. I yeah. I. I I think they get it, and they, if they, if that is true, you know, right? I think they get it, and they they put it out there. Yeah, to media, to other media partners. I know that you know Wrestling Inc has been pretty good with posting them uh, the last couple of weeks. So, and I, you know, and other people are posting it too. I don't know. I don't know why. You know, there's more information out there. Why? Why is it being? Why mm. are people trying to like suppress the information? Right. I right. want to know what the fast tracks are because I'm interested in these things. You love that stuff. I love, dude. You can love I tell so you, like, for it, I really am. I'm really big on analytical data and just let me, mm-hmm. like, when when uh, Brandon puts out those numbers. By the way, fantastic mm-hmm. analysis uh, that he does. I, I would highly recommend you support his Patreon because it takes a lot of work to put these things together. But when he breaks it down, like, I'm really interested, like, how the quarter hours are broken down. Like, these are all indicators yeah. of something. Whether or not you want to make it a positive or a negative, it's an indicator of something. Yeah, yeah. It's just a matter of figuring that out. Like, wh- how are you going to spin it now? 
Right, right, right. You know, how are you going to spin that this number was put out? Some people would say, well, that's great if WWE is providing these numbers. Some people would say, oh, it's great that Wrestling Inc. had this number or Fightful or whoever, mm-hmm. Meltzer had the number. Uh, and now it's being passed on to us. Or you could have the stance that you think it, WWE is trying to harm mm-hmm. Rampage by releasing these numbers to the public. Yeah. So you, you could, listen, two, if, if that is the case... You could look at it in two totally different ways and still be correct. <laughs> I really think you should do an analytical show called By the Numbers with Andrew Zarian. You know what? And people you just... get very upset by that because I'm a centrist bitch, remember? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That's the best compliment, dude. If you, if you are around, the guy that called me a centrist bitch on, on Reddit, mm-hmm. I have used that line with everything I do now mm-hmm. because I really, I, I don't. I don't have a bias. I love the numbers. I just love numbers. I came in today. His back was turned to me, and uh, I, I see a lot of shuffling, a lot going, of shuffling on. going on. I and know, then I know. You surprised me. It was an Excel sheet with just a uh, s- s- numbers all over the place, and he slammed down the laptop and was like, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> uh, let's see what we got here. All right, guys. Uh, we got a couple more minutes from a fellow Armenian here, Don99, Varuj Baltagian. Varuj, Baretes Varuj, John. Wow. Uh, worst Dark Side of the Ring episode so far. First time I spoke in Armenian on the air. Really? Mm-hmm. I think you've done it before. Uh, worst Dark Side of the Ring episode so far. Oh. Um, let's see. I'll tell you right now. I mean, technically, the, 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 the Korea one, like I've, I've, I've known the story bunch. Yeah. Um, the becoming warrior, I guess this season. I don't know. Okay. I, th- I thought it was a really good season. I thought they were all really good. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, let's do a few more. We got to get out of here in about five minutes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see. This is from, uh, Supersonic X. With the women's division in WWE, do you think the women's division is heading to a low point even with the absence of Asuka and Bailey? I don't think it's headed to a low, low point. Mm-hmm. Um, their women's division is really talented. They have a really good women's division, but mm-hmm. they need to start now making newer stars. You know, they did great with, uh, with Bianca. Yes, right? yes. They're absolutely. Fantastic. But who's the next Bianca now? Who, who are you building up after <laughs> Bianca? Because... You need to now replace, you know, I, I think people forget we got Charlotte, Becky, uh, Charlotte, Becky, Paige, Paige was before, yeah, Paige right? Was before. Charlotte, Becky, Sasha and Bailey all at the same time. Yeah, dude. But, but Paige and AJ kind of started that. Yes. You know, they started, but we got, I mean, tremendous, uh, tremendous amount of people. A lot there. of talent. Yeah. A lot of talent. So I, I don't. I, I don't think they, 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 they're in that position to bring up four tremendous talents like that and elevate them because things are mm. kind of solidified. The women's division was was ransacked at that point. They didn't really have a, a really strong women's division mm. uh, because th- it wasn't their focus. But now it is. I, I don't know who that next person is going to be. I'd love to I'd love to you know get people's opinion on who that next major star is. Okay. Yeah. Guys, who, who do you think is the next major female star? Uh, this is from Orion, the constellation itself. Uh, any news on the future of NXT takeovers? I don't know. That that's that's a great question. I just don't think they're going to be able to sell out a fourteen thousand person building anymore with the roster that they have. It's not intended to do that. Uh, do you have, I think we have time for one more. Yeah. Uh, this is a fun one. This is from our buddy Shin. What's up, Shin? Yeah. Uh, question: How long until Montez Ford goes solo and shows how much better he is than The Rock? Oh man, you know Montez Ford is fantastic. I really want him. I want to see him. He's awesome. I hope his career trajectory continues. Absolutely, big guy too. Big dude, deceptively yeah. big. We saw I, him at that MSG thing mm-hmm. in the in the uh, in the lounge area. Big guy. Yeah, very big guy. Uh, he has a question. How would you explain AEW having no issues selling UBS, but mm-hmm. WWE is AEW has run the same market a lot too. Absolutely, mm-hmm. but. How many times have you had an opportunity to see AEW versus how many times have you had an opportunity to see WWE? Mm-hmm. That plays a big... I'm saying as a whole. Absolutely. Right? AEW, Absolutely. forget about the ratings. Forget about the ratings, right? Mm-hmm. Let's take the ratings and the business and all that out of the equation. Mm-hmm. AEW, perception-wise, is a cooler product right now. Two fans that are willing to go to watch it. You know, they have a very dedicated... And it's also a very different audience. Remember, the WWE audience is filled mm-hmm. with casual fans... Hardcore fans, young, like very young fans, yeah. older fans, while AEW's fan base is not as diverse. 
with age and demo and all that not stuff. yet not yet because again and even though it is even if you have you know like gender diversity or racial diversity yeah. whatever that is it doesn't matter because these are p1s these are fans of wrestling mm -hmm. these are professional wrestling fans and it's a lot easier to convince someone that's more of a uh, of a uh, a hardcore fan mm -hmm. than uh, to go to AEW than it is to tell a casual fan to go on a Monday night to go watch Raw when you haven't really told them something big could happen. Yeah. Roman Reigns being added, I mean, I think they sold a hundred and something tickets. Roman being mm -hmm. added, and I, they'll, they'll probably sell a lot more in the coming days. But you know, it's rough. It's not. They're not doing well in that market. But mm -hmm. you know, San Jose was a rough was a rough night for them too. But San Jose is always a rough market. Yeah, uh, we got one more. Was this super chat? Want to get to it before we get out of yeah. here? This is from Joel Wood again. Do you think the backlash of the women's match times will cause a change in their times in the future? Say that again. Do you think the backlash of the women's match times? Yeah. Was like remember the uh, matches from Monday were like under four minutes. Yeah. Will that cause a change in their times in the future? Do you think they'll get extended because people are complaining about I think, it? I think that sucks. I think, I think I, it sucks too. I, I'm going to tell you. I, I think you know doing a two-minute match is pointless, but sometimes you have to. because. But right. on SmackDown, they gave them 10 minutes. Right. There was a seven-minute match and an eight-minute match. So it, 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 when you look at everything under a microscope, you will find something wrong with it. Did you really want a 10-minute match on Raw with Dewdrop and who, who, who's Dewdrop facing? Yeah, I think the backlash definitely stems from like I get it. You know, they work just as hard as the guys to do this craft, right? And it sucks that the women's segments usually get relegated for time constraints. I mean, here is Shayna Baszler and Dana Brooke. It went one twenty four, mm -hmm. right? We don't know if there was time, like you said, time constraints. We don't know if they were running over. We don't. I, there's there's, right. a, there's a thousand different variables here in this. Thousand different variables. Maybe they just felt that Dewdrop versus Natalia is not a is not a ten minute match. It's mm -hmm. not a five minute match. It's yeah. a three minute match. So I don't know. I it, I don't really go look at the timing as much yeah, with yeah. this stuff. But I get it. I mean, it, it, a minute and a half for a match that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Are we done? I think we're done. All right, that's it, guys. Uh, that's it for this week. I am headed to Manhattan. Do you see my eye? Look at this. What happened to it? My contact lens cut my eye. Oh no. I thought you punched yourself in the face. Nah, like that. <laughs> uh, that's it, guys. Uh, we will be back next week on Tuesday. Sure. Okay, we're going to do a show Tuesday because I'm not here Thursday. No. No. Can't do it. Okay. Unless it's in the afternoon, but... Okay. Can we do Wednesday? We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll all right. Out. All right. All right. Uh, let's see. Look at SmackDown times again, Andrew. They were all under three. Were they really? Wait a minute. I had a different timing. Then, then I'm 100% wrong, and let's see here. Where's the SmackDown results? Where the hell's the SmackDown results? Let's Where see. are my SmackDown everything results? Everything is uh, everything is jumbled up in these. Okay, notes. here we go. <laughs> oh yeah, I thought they gave that match time to one one thirty three, two thirteen. Zelina Vega versus Tony Storm. I thought that Tony Storm thing was ridiculous. By the way, with Zelina, they're talking about Tony like they're they're introducing Tony as a new character. Yeah, and they had Tony die in two minutes in the match. Very weird. Why? It's weird, weird stuff they do sometimes, man. Yeah, yeah. Listen, I you could I you could go into booking philosophy all you want, mm -hmm. right? But a minute thirty three, Liv Morgan versus Carmella. I know they need to get through with it, mm -hmm. but can we figure out some other way? Exactly, exactly. Is that, I, do you, you know if, if, if because you're telling me that this match is pointless mm -hmm. by giving it a minute thirty three? So how would I ever be invested in Carmella and Liv Morgan ever again in a match? Right? I, I mean, you yeah, want to yeah, create yeah, yeah. stars. Is it, it, do you do it in a minute 33? Is that how you create the tough, star? Tough, man, tough. You know, so I, listen, there's so many different ways you can look at this. You really, you really, really can. I, I, I'm not a fan of, of how they're laying this out, but whatever. It is what it is. Yeah. All right, guys, that's it for this week. I got to go. Later. I got to go and make pasta today. That's what I'm doing. Making all day. pasta? All day. Handmade? Making pasta. Handmade. What are you making? Totalini? I'm making uh, fettuccine. Yeah. I'm making, uh, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make some Sfiadel for dessert. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I love a good Sfiadel. Yeah. Are you a Sfiadel fan? I've never had a. Mm, I have no comparison. Hmm? I have no comparison. You have no comparison? Yeah, I have no comparison. Okay. Love Sfiadel. All right, guys. See you next time. Take care.